Good evening, man. Good evening, man. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good to have you all. Church family, to all our virtual friends that are out there, for the friends of Prospect Hill in this ministry. God bless you. Good to have you all. And welcome to Tick's Talk with Pastor D. I um, have my brother with me, my friend, the pastor elect of the Northern Baptist Church here in St. Louis, Missouri. Again, I said he is the pastor elect of the Northern Baptist Church here in St. Louis, Missouri. Pastor Robert Glassby, he's no stranger. So glad to have him on today. How you doing, brother Pastor? Thank you, sir, for having me. Glad to be here. All I'm right. Excited about this opportunity. All right, all right. So I explain to you what text talk is. Um, here at the Prospect Hill Church, we are walking through the Gospel of John. The title of the series is Yes, I'm a Believer. And during this time and era that we are living in, we are faced with a couple of things when it comes to that of the believer. Um, for one thing, we have anybody claiming to be Christian. Um, all types of people, party affiliations, I'm trying to be kind of politically correct. Um, but everybody's claiming to be Christian, but yet, we're called to be believers. And so we know about that word Christian yeah. because actually, yeah. when you research it, it was a derogatory term. Right. Right. right, you got huge right from Derogatory. Yeah. 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 Right, so I, I want to shift us from that of not only just being a Christian, but to be a believer. So we've been walking through the Gospel of John, like I told you, and so we've been um, dealing with this Gospel and John's um, writing to push us in an area, but also to affirm not only our, us as believers, but also to encourage believers to come. Yeah. And that is to, on this platform the church has now, virtually, that is to push the gospel Absolutely. through the ages and to push them in the place of being a believer. So just welcome, glad to have you all with us. Uh, we're going to whisper a word of prayer. Pastor, if you will pray and then we'll jump into our conversation. Father, we thank you for this chance to uh, study your word. We thank you for the opportunity to hear from you and to discuss these timeless truths that you have given us, not just for academics, but uh, to transform our lives. We pray, Lord, that those that have tuned in, um, that you would be with them uh, by way of your spirit, whereby though we are not at the same place, we can still be of the same mind. Bless us all. Continue to uh, cover this pastor and develop this church and every church that is open in your name. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let me hear. Uh, we kind of did an introduction towards the prologue of the Gospel of John. Um, you very, you're a very studious um, preacher. Um, tell me about your experience. Uh, with the Johnny epistles? Um, it's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite, I guess you could say, catalog of, of writings. Uh, and it's interesting as you were talking about the Christianity and, and labeling Christianity, uh, I was kind of dealing with that in our Bible study last week and creating a distinction between uh, people that use that name of Christianity uh, and, and are cloaked with evil. We saw that last week uh, wow. at, at the corporate, at, excuse me, at the Capitol building. Yeah. There were Christians there at the Capitol building. Uh, but I, I uh, led people to, to, to understand that I'm really leaning more towards discipleship, being a believer, because if you're following uh, the master teacher, there's just some things you won't do. Uh, but I think John really capitalizes that relationship with the Christ throughout his catalog of writings uh, and specifically with, with the gospel, dealing with uh, Jesus as the son of God as he writes about him and, and shows forth that belief and um, uh, even living uh, with God and uh, the three Johns and, and yeah, you know abiding with him forever in the book of Revelation, you know, so you, you have kind of a, a bookend approach with the Christ in, in, in your total uh, salvific experience with him. 
Um, so yeah, my experience, I've had an opportunity to, to teach it multiple times, preach it multiple times, but study it uh, uh, regularly because so much of what we deal with comes right back to the belief that Jesus is the Son of God. Right, right. Um, the approach that John takes, um, um, turn your Bibles to um, uh, John chapter 1, and actually we're going to pick up back at verse 14. Um, the other week when we preached from the subject matter, the incarnation of Christ, um, yet I labored for a while, but yet there was much to be discussed. It's it, inexhaustible. It's inexhaustible. <laughs> it was inexhaustible. And so I, I want to get back to verse 14 and the Gospel of John chapter, chapter 1. So get your Bibles, get your Bibles out there, uh, put your phone down, get, get, your, get, get your real Bible, get your paper Bible. Uh, we paper Bible say, that's what that one man <laughs> says, <laughs> we're paper Bible say, get your Bibles, let's go to um, John 14, chapter 1. Now, do me a favor, because I want to hear your approach. Walk me to verse number four, to verse 14. <laughs> I want to shout to that. I can't be killed. Walk me. Walk, come on, set it up. I want to hear. That's right, use your preaching book. Well, I'm, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see uh, uh, the eternal word, um, the witness to the word, and the word becoming flesh is, is how I saw that. So, you know, of course, the eternal word, uh, it's almost as if he takes a time machine back to Genesis 1, uh, showing us that in the beginning God was there. Uh, one, it, 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 the prologue is so beautiful because so many things are assumed that you already understand. In the beginning was the word. The beginning of what? The world, Genesis 1. It, it's an assumption that a believer in faith already recognizes and understands. So he shows the eternal word, how he was there in the beginning. And, and j just from a contemporary standpoint, that stands on the neck of so many uh, cults and things of that nature from an exegetical standpoint. You divide out one group and you push out another and, and you show the authenticity of the Godhead by, in, in eternity. So yes, you know, next you come with the witness. He talks about John. It kind of shows him, talks about that true light. and. Uh, John was not the light, but gave bear witness he to the, the light. Voice. He was that voice, the voice crying in the wilderness. That's I didn't want to get hit. The one voice. The one voice. That's how he identified himself That's as one. the one voice. Yeah. I am not the Christ. I'm not Elijah. I'm not the prophet. I'm the voice. I'm the, the, the one voice. crying in the wilderness. That's another good. That's a great <laughs> one, you know, in the thought that I'm, I'm not the main attraction, but I'm here to point you to the main okay. attraction. And I think so much of what we do in ministry needs to have that type of mind state uh, versus the older traditional style of uh, setting up a cult under a pastor. Right. You know, he has to worship and uh, uh, attend to his faith, just like the believer uh, within the pew. Uh, but I think that's a great note and, and lesson for us that we, we must point to the main attraction. That's right. Uh, keeping a, a big picture approach that Jesus is, you know, Christologically operating. He's going to be in the middle, needs to be in the middle at all times. But then the word became flesh. So, you know, he shows that, you know, man needed a light with all of its darkness and God himself provided that light. Um, but I think the beauty of it is how it, as simple and elegant as John writes, it's such a forceful writing because he sets a line in the sand with truth and falsehood, light and darkness, That's right. you know, um, by Jesus becoming flesh, that's right in the face of Gnosticism that said flesh is evil. That's right. No, don't go too far. Okay. Don't I go too far. I'm just right there. Yeah, you write that up. I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> now, we, we know from the synoptic approach versus that of John's approach. Now, let's talk about this. When you look at, we know Matthew wrote to the Jews. The Jews. Luke wrote to the Greeks, Gentiles, I don't call it. Uh, Mark wrote to the Romans, Gentiles, and the struggling Christians, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so John writes, how could John write as a disciple 
in the manner that he wrote. Listen to me. How could John write in that manner? Because he takes us not from Matthew King, you know, Mark suffering servant, um, son, of man, son of man with Luke, but he takes us to a deeper approach to knowing who the Christ is. And, and whereas the other Gospels are great, not taking anything from the synoptic writers, but John takes us further in and deeper down. If I can still E.K. Bailey's sermon, further in and deeper down, he, he takes us and shows us another side of Christ in the deity. It's almost like he takes a Route 66 approach okay. versus, versus the main highway as the synoptics do. They kind of, they, they, they more. exactly. More. So, you know, so much of what the, the, the gospel writers uh, uh, scribed or wrote was pretty much piggybacking off of the other or picking up more information. John's different in that uh, it's as if he goes by those those accounts, we'll call them stories, we call it, but those accounts, That's he right. goes by them and even drops information that the synoptics uh, don't deal with. Okay. You know, he, to me, he ties up loose ends uh, uh, to some of the synoptic accounts. So I think that in the way he writes, why he writes and to whom he writes are all important for the end of that first century, as right. Gnosticism is starting to pick up, uh, approximately 60 years after Christ has ascended to the Father, you could imagine that that voice and that belief began to lose traction. And now, in the midst of government persecution, right. um, spiritual uh, dilution, right. if you the, will, temple, the temple has been the temple. The has, temple has been has, has been, been destroyed, destroyed at this point. Right. So. All of those things, it, it, I think it's a, 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 a key time to reestablish that belief um, in the midst of persecution. Even now, I, I see the the, the, need the, the connection right. even here. There's persecution from our government. There's, there's persecution from the world. And now more than ever, syncretism doesn't work. Oh, sir. Syncretism, you're gonna pick a little bit up of this of the of the Muslims and a little bit of this of, of the of, of the Catholic faith and um, some of this from uh, Hinduism when John is explicitly showing and sharing that life is in the Christ. That's right, that's right. Let's hit that verse 14. Let's hit that verse 14. John chapter 1, for those who are on, God bless you. Do me a favor, please share this, share this, share this conversation. Text talk with Pastor D with Pastor Glassby tonight. Um, uh, so, uh, Pastor Glassby has so eloquently walked us through and got us to verse 14. Go, let's take us back to the incarnation of Christ because this is a huge subject matter. If we went uh, the other week, well, Pastor, I stayed on verse 14 for majority of the time. Because, as you know, that verse 14 is inexhaustible. And the word became flesh. Now, think about this. Think about the, the various gods that were uh, the attraction of that day. And, and as well as we look at that of idol gods and what idol gods, what role idol gods played in the life of Israel. Right. And their trouble with keeping from those idol gods, they turn to those various um, asterisks, Baals, and Molek, we can name the world. Yeah. And, and then we know how they, how it went. when that one didn't work, you turn around and build something else. But here it is, John says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only God and of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the word became flesh. But, but Pastor, if you could talk about the two natures of God. All man, being all man and all God. Come on, tell me, talk, let's talk about those two natures. He, take, take notes. Now, I love how in dealing with the verse and being, as we say, being a slave to the text, 
he already introduced the word as God in verse one. So now he essentially is saying that this, this God has now become flesh. He's become like you and I, and not only become like you and I, he's dwelt among us, someone so holy, someone so awesome, the creator, sustainer, maintainer of all things, uh, has dwelt among us. I mean, with a comma there, I think the, the comma provides an opportunity to shout because he shows us clearly that there's been this uh, 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 condescending, as it's spoken of in, in, in Philippians, where you know the Christ didn't empty himself of his glory. That's right. Uh, it's as if he took uh, flesh and uh, curtained himself from us. Um, but he became flesh, as I said, and the conjunction dwelt among us. Among us. Okay. Uh, the two natures, the humanity of Christ. Now, remember what we're up against. And again, I know you may say for some people this is review. For others, this may be new. But we want to make sure that we approach this correct. He's up against individuals who have called, I had questioned, the humanity of Jesus Christ. Now, when we deal with the Gnostics, they have no problem with his deity, no. but they had a problem with that the of his in humanity. Flesh. So the fact that John comes with an approach to say, and the word became flesh, he's, he's, <laughs> he's defending against their questioning of the humanity of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and again, scripture proves that Christ was human. That he's all God, all man. Go ahead, go ahead, Rip. I, I see it again. Yeah, so when you speak of how he contends against, against Gnosticism, uh, but still shows that it, it doesn't diminish uh, his divinity in, in, in that he was all man. Right. But he's not a freak either, as, as he's clearly sharing that though he's 100% man, he's 100% God. Uh, equally, um, it, it doesn't take away from either either portion, uh, but it also stands firmly up against those who think that or thought in, in that time um, that, that anything associated with this world was basically evil. Right. Say that one more time. Anything associated with this world was basically evil. So matter, matter is evil. Evil. So the word is going to become flesh, but the word is not going to be partaking or partaking of the of word's evil. mess. Okay. okay, do me a favor. Uh, turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter four and verse four. So again, they didn't question his deity, they questioned his humanity. So um, let's look at what scripture has to say. Galatians 4 and 4. Y'all got it? Make sure they make sure they turn their Bibles. Make sure they turn, <laughs> turn their Bibles. Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time had come. God sent forth his, what? Son, born of a woman, born under the law. Listen, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption <laughs> as, as sons. Further scripture proof that Christ came in the flesh. Come on, talk to me. I see. The mediatorial uh, representation he, he has is, is, you know, the old preacher would say he reached his hand up and, and reached his hand down to bring that connection back together, you know, there on Calvary. Uh, but what I always love about that verse is uh, people say, when the fullness of time, time. of time, of time, that's Full what they time. say, of time. But, the time helps us to understand that it was when God decided that it was so. It was, so. It, it was that specific time for that specific person in work. 
uh, to be conducted and, as he said, to help us to receive the adoption. Adoption. As, as sons. As sons. As sons. Like, like in the same character. Talk, so, sir. so now you'll have the same rights and privileges the talk, as, sir. As, 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 as the natural son, if right. you will. So it's so 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 it's it's the picture of a child that's been adopted, who's been picked out, favored on, but yet when they come home and there's some other kids there that belong to the couple that was birthed, but yet that adopted son is gonna receive the same benefits that they receive. Absolutely. Talks. I think about Mephibosheth at, at that point in time, someone that was on the outside but was brought inside the palace and you know, everybody, you know, everybody waited till he got to the table, though he had a limp and may have moved a little slower. Uh, that's a good note for somebody. You might move a little slower, but God still has a place at the table for you. You know, that, that it's just good news <laughs> as a son. You know, you, you, you might take a second to get to the table, Talk, but God still has a place for you at the table. Amen. Okay. Further, further. Further proof of the humanity of Christ. Let's look at this. Matthew chapter 1. Get your Bibles. Don't play with me. Prospect Hill. Get your Bibles. Matthew chapter 1. I got these, I got these new glasses, y'all, so y'all bear with me. I'm getting used to them. <laughs> I feel like, um, I feel like, um, Benny Snake Eye Wilson. I just <laughs> <laughs> Matthew chapter 1. The virgin birth. Look at verse 18. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And the word became flesh and dealt among us. And now this woman has been found with child by that of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and that wanted to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you marry your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the what? Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And she will bring forth the son and you should call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be what? Fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord yeah. through the prophet saying behold the virgin shall be with a child and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translating God with us. <laughs> so, further proof of the humanity of Christ being that he was birthed through that of naturally. Naturally. But yet, unnaturally. Unnaturally. <laughs> Beautiful. Talk about it. But so the, the, the sin trait is passed through a man. Hallelujah. God couldn't have his, his child with a sinful nature. We, we know that. So he had, he had to be, he had to have a perfect parent, if we could say it like that. Um, so no, a, a, a man couldn't be um, the progenitor of the Savior. So are you saying that through that of the male seed. <laughs> I got to go there, Because of the male seed. And through that of seed. Hold on. Produces that of sin? At this juncture, because of the fall of humanity, absolutely. Because when Adam sinned, what happened? All of humanity. All of humanity. Through association. So Through association. The, so what this second Adam that is being born of this woman. Could not be spilled of seed, but yet could be birthed of woman. Hallelujah. Talk good. Now only the Lord can do that. And the word became flesh. Flesh. This kind of speaks of the curtain. That, that's another subject in the division when you start dealing with uh, the anatomy of the woman versus the anatomy of the man. Um, so the Essentially, the womb is a perfect environment. There's no sin in the womb. 
because it comes from the man. But having a having the the holy the Holy Ghost as the Father, uh, now you have a a, a perfect uh, offspring. Right. In Jesus Christ. Right. Okay. So we see that of born of a woman. We see the virgin birth. But also in Matthew one and one, he's called the son of David, the son of Abraham. The Davidic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant. I'm Twelve. On yeah. here it is, right here. Christ in the flesh represents that of that covenant and what would come to pass in that of Jesus Christ. It's it's just that simple. Now this is the thing I want to talk about when it comes to that belief. People will believe everything they see on social media. They believe something somebody says, but when it comes to this book, there's an issue of believing what's in this book. Yeah. And and so it, it's clear. Like again, this is extensive. I mean, I still got some more to talk about. But yet, if I if I believe in this book and what this book says about the person of Jesus Christ as well as um, the, the, um, the deity, as well as his humanity, why is it that I am subject to all kinds of ideologies when it comes to Jesus Christ, whether he was a man, whether he was not God, whether he was a prophet, whether he was a Michael, the archangel reincarnated, which would some other um, beliefs teach. But what scripture clearly says that he was man and God. So how do we how, how do we deal with individuals, even in our pews, Absolutely. who come in the fellowship, been there for years, but yet they still wrestle with the idea that he was all man, that he was all man and all God. Absolutely, because and I think that's just how evil humanity is. The evil in humanity doesn't doesn't allow the darkness staying with the theme of John. The darkness within humanity doesn't allow us to see the light in others. Um, and, and with all the evidence before us in, 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 in uh, the word of God, and as Christological as each book is in the Old Testament and the New Testament, to believe brings about accountability. Wow. Hmm. Wow. If... I believe that he is, I now must surrender to the Lord and to the one that has confessed, my savior. Mm -hmm. But to acknowledge that brings about accountability before God. Talk, sir. Nobody Talk, sir. wants to be accountable. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Most people operate on the periphery of their faith. But when you have what the outside on just on the cusp, most people just want to be close enough to be on the roster or you know on the membership as opposed to buying in. And and if any man will be my disciple, he must deny himself. Most there's people no are not looking. No, most people are not willing to deny themselves. There's no there's no personal pleasure in the, the you know denial. Talk, sir. Now let's look at this. Um, again, the questioning of his human nature. Second Corinthians chapter five. You said chapter five. Yeah. Did Christ receive a sinful human nature? Let's look at this. Second Corinthians chapter five. Look at verses uh, 21. Second Corinthians 5 and 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. Listen to the text, y'all. Listen, put that down and listen. Put this phone down. He said, for he made him. He being God. Okay, right. Come on now. The he in the text is God. 
The hem of the text is Jesus Christ. But look what he made him to be. Him who knew no sin. <laughs> to be sin. Now, Lamb of God. How does that how does that make sense for an unbeliever who's saying, but pastor, I'm struggling with this whole Jesus idea. I, I, I just can't get it, brother pastor. How, how is it that he knew no sin, but he became sin? How, how does that work? And how is it that he can have human functioning uh, faculties and, and not have sin on his hand? Thank you, Lord. The, the fact that he was perfect, meaning that he had he, he operated, he was, as the Galatian text, Galatians text shared with us, he was born under the law. He observed the law perfectly. Right. He was the law. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. <laughs> but in operating in it perfectly now, because he had no account or uh, no sin to account for personally, right. he can sacrificially take on sin of someone else because he's perfect. So if he had uh, died hypothetically, if he had sinned and then uh, died, he had only accounted for his own personal sin. But the fact that he has no sin on his record allows him now sacrificially to take on the sins of someone else. Right. You know, so on the cross, it's, you know, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. Go there. Go because, there. yeah, at that point in time, the sins of the world uh, had been laid upon him. And, and as somebody eloquently tried to say, you know, Two suns can't shine at the same time in that moment. But I see it as the Lord, as God was distancing himself so. from his son um, because of the sin that right. he had been become. Right, he because became. sin makes a disconnect With between God, God and, and us. That object. And at that moment, because there are times that we have been in seven last words and we have heard that, that text. Butchered. Mishandled, <laughs> not understanding that Jesus at that time had never felt the separation from his of father. his father. And because he had never felt that separation, that because he now he is perhaps. fully that of sin, and God has to turn his back because that's what separates us. Yes, sir. God does not like sin. I'm not going to call sin out, but you know what your sin is, and God does not like it. Absolutely. I don't want to shift too much because we're going to another area. But but the, the fact that oh, I'll say my daddy now because of the fact he who knew no sin became sin, so he voluntarily became the sin became the that of which we needed to to save us, which takes us back to Genesis three fifteen. Was it fifteen fourteen fifteen? And he would um yeah well let me guess I got a Bible right here Genesis three uh. Let me say 315. Huh? Go ahead. Genesis 315. Let's go there, y'all. Y'all know what Genesis is. You don't know what Genesis is, man? Is your Genesis in your mind? <laughs> oh, my Genesis stuff. All right. He shall bruise. Yes, sir. Your head and you shall. Now, I, I love this text right here. Mm -hmm. This is 315. Because in the text, it doesn't identify who the he is. <laughs> but we know who the he is as we go into the text. And so even, even when man had sinned, God had already prepared a plan with bringing that of Christ to us to save us. And so we already see the plan of salvation in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 at the fall of man which takes us back to Galatians 4 and in the duration of time mm -hmm. in God's time he sent Jesus the Christ who is all God and all man who knew no sin to become sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. Now the thing about it is, is that Robert 
I cannot declare myself righteous. No. I may think that you're righteous, but there is only one who can declare us righteous. Yes, and that was done through the blood of Jesus Christ, which takes us back to Christ had a human form. The imputed righteousness that he provides for us raising early on the third day. But even in, in this, this, this Genesis 3 text, you know, God provides grace even before grace is personified in Jesus Christ. Ooh. Right here in, you can't get to verse, you can't come Ooh. to 3 and not look at uh, 21. Talk, sir. Go you ahead. Go there. You can't. He said, God made tunics of skin and clothed them. How you make tunics of skin? Something had to die. Something had to die. There is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. So even though they were being expelled from this, this God-designed place, God was still covering them as he was putting them out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. Let's go to, let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Yes, sir. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Mm. Let's look at verse number 5. Again, for those who just have just come in, um, here at the Prospect Hill Church, we're walking through the Gospel of John, and we're just starting a journey. This is text talk with Pastor D. We're in John chapter 1, verse 14. We're dealing with the idea of how the Gnostics had called in question the humanity of Jesus Christ for um, in their belief that it was impossible for matter to remain um, sinless. So we're arguing that from scripture that, that Christ was human, that he is God, that he is human, and in him there was no sin. But he became sin for us. Let's look at 1 John chapter 3, uh, verse number 5. And you know that he was manifested. Mm -hmm. Let's stop right there. And you know that he was manifested. Now, what does manifested mean? Unveiled. He was unveiled, brought to an appearance. He was manifested, watch the text, to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Woo! Can I add a verse number six? Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. But I'm going to go back to verse number five. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no there is no sin. It speaks of sin. the perfect person. Right. It speaks of that 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 perfect person that will we'll deal more in John. You know, the, but the beauty of it is that it was his time. He was. Man, he said, unveiled um, in the perfect time to do exactly one thing, to take away the sins of the world. Right. That was his job. That was his job. Nothing else. But but watch this. When we get into further in John, there are the signs. Now, the signs come as further proof, proof. to show who he is. Now, we're dealing with the two natures of Christ. We're dealing with his human nature. And so we have walked um, that of his birth. We have walked that of the word covered flesh. Mm -hmm. We have walked that of his birth. We have walked that he was sinless. But now let's look at his human development. Because when we look at John, John, um, look at the Gospel of John, he uh, presents, he, you can divide, excuse me, if we can look at how it's divided, John presents Jesus in this, in this way. Uh, first of all, we see the divine qualities of God, that of his essence. Secondly, we see Jesus as a divine messenger. Thirdly, we see him as a fulfillment of the Old Testament. But I want to look at this when I look at his qualities and his essence and look at his human nature. And that is he had human development. Let's look at Luke 2 yeah. and 52. Turn your Bibles. Luke 2 and 52. Is this him waxing strong? Ooh. Luke 2 and 52. You got it? If you got it, you ought to show some sign. 
The Bible said, I feel it tonight. Mm -hmm. I like this. You're doing good, Pastor. You teaching me tonight. You blessing my soul. Luke 2 and 52. Listen, listen. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. His human development. Talk about it, bro, Pastor. So it, it shows that he, as a human, he developed um, like you and I developed perfectly. Um, he was not the cookie thief. You know, he, he didn't steal paper clips. Uh, you know, <laughs> he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't play uh, uh, that, what was that we played in, in the hotels, uh, knocking on doors and run away. That, I, I, I didn't play in the hotels, don't put yeah, me out there like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he did that. He did that at conventions. <laughs> <laughs> His physical and mental he development didn't do that. are not to be explained as primary due to his deity. It was normal human growth. Great way. No, normal human growth. Simple. In other words, you know, um, he, he wasn't doing 30-year-old man things at five. Right. He, he, he did it naturally. Listen to this. He seemed so brilliant in his mental development because he had total faith in obedience. He had no sin nature or sin acts to distract is learning. So, um, we look at this text, and Jesus increased the wisdom that's your favorite man. He has advanced, he is advancing further to prove that his humanity existed. He grew. He was born as that of a baby. He grew as that of a lad. He came into his teenagers, adolescent years, teenage years, whatever you want to call it. And he grew into a man, but the Bible says, and he increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. So further proving that Christ was human and he had human development. Um, let's look at this. He had eccentric elements of human nature. Look at Luke 24, 30, 39. Luke 24, 39. I just wonder, I keep saying that Mary pondered these things in her heart. You know, I always wondered how those things affected her belief system in as he developed. And even at the cross, I wonder was she pondering those things as a child, you know? But the text is silent to that. We can't speculate with that. That's a good note, though. Good question. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I figured it out. It'll come to me after a while, because it's, it's a verse. That I want to, um, that, that can help that argument. Uh, Luke 24, 39. Behold, now this is Jesus appearing to his disciples. Mm -hmm. Behold, my hands and my feet, that is, I myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh. And bones, as you see, I have. Watch. Now, let's remember now, the Gnostics argued the human, the human nature of Jesus Christ. They called it in to question. And here it is, because they also suggested that at Calvary, he was that of a phantom. That the Christ had left him. Totally false. So even a resurrected Christ still has nail prints. What? No, 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 no. Say that one more time. Even a resurrected Christ still has, has nail prints. Even a resurrected Christ still has what? Nail prints. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To show that he's overcome what they thought. Was going to take him out. Absolutely. Further. Proof. Proof. <laughs> Of his deity and, and his humanity. humanity. Hear my hands. Behold, look, my hands, my feet, that it is I. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I 
Hey, now listen, if I'm the disciples, I just want to fill out. Hey, I'd have been no good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't but I suggest somebody today. I think they need to handle him. You know, they need that opportunity to see that he is real, that he's not an aber, you know, that he's not a ghost. Talk, sir. Uh, but he, he's genuine. And even John addresses that over in first That's John right. in the first chapter. That's uh, right. Speaking about that which we have held, that which we have uh, engaged. That's right. Further arguing against uh, this this cult that is, you know, catching steam. This narcissism. Now, let's look at Hebrews ten. Now, I love Hebrews ten. That's Hebrews ten. If you if you love the Lord and you love the Old Testament and you read Leviticus, mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter ten yeah. will take you out. 10 verse 5. Are you there? Listen to this. Therefore, when he had come into the world, he said, Sacrifice an offering you did not desire but a body you have prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Did you all see that? Did you all see that text? Okay. Listen to this. Now, when you go down to verse number eight, go to verse number nine, look at the B clause. It says, he takes away the first that he may establish the second, but that, but that will will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. A better sacrifice. A better sacrifice, but yet it speaks of the human nature, it speaks of a lot. That text is, is power trash because it speaks of that Christ uh, solidifies that of the needed sacrifice to do away with sin. It also speaks to that of the human nature of Christ, but it also speaks to that of God being satisfied with that sacrifice that was offered up for us, which is once and for all good enough. He serves, he, he's that propitiation. Say that, say that word again. Propitiation. He he satisfies the wrath of God. Yes, sir. With his with his death on the cross. Uh, I like how how former pastor said uh, the 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 death of Christ was like a pacifier uh, for God's wrath. In that, if God's wrath was screaming for for justice. The death of Christ became the pacifier to stop it from screaming, uh, kind of in the, 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 the mind of a baby in a pacifier. Uh, I got a two-year-old boss at home, and you know she goes to Patton or her passy to be satisfied. And God's wrath was screaming for justice because of sin, but uh, the death of Christ, that propitiation became that would sacrifice or satisfy God's wrath or sin. That was dead on. Now, and the word became flesh, we're back in John, and dwelt among us. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I told you the other week that word dwelt simply means the tabernacle. Is that of a tent, temporary dwelling place, further, further revealing his humanity. And he dwelt among us. God came down mm -hmm. to us. I told this story um, in a sermon that I preached, and, and I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, it was my um, my Houston pastor. He don't know my Houston pastor, Dr. Ralph West. And in that he tells a story about, about um Charlie Brown. Mm. 
Charlie Brown was trying to get the birds to eat and the birds would not eat. He was trying to lead them into the barn. And he tried to put out some food, but the birds wouldn't eat. But he wanted to lead them to the barn, the barn that had been prepared for them to hang out, the barn that had been prepared for them to have covering, mm -hmm. the barn that, that was prepared for them. Right. He wanted to lead them there, but they would not eat. So Charlie Brown said, oh, then I become a bird so they can follow me into the barn. So Charlie Brown dressed himself in bird clothes and there he led him in, but he had to become the bird in order to lead the birds into the barn. What did I just say? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when we would not go to him, he came to us, Jesus Christ, prophet, priest, and king, and may I ask, the Lamb, may I add, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, That's right. how much love did God have to have for you to send his only begotten son to be condemned, Woo! Mm. to be condemned, to be murdered, to, to be sacrificed for us, that God thought enough of us to say, since y'all can't get it together, I'm going to come down and do it myself. Yes, Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. What you had no ability to do through the law, I can do through love. Ooh. I'm done. <laughs> May the Lord bless you real good, because I feel my help now. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel an like E-flat in the building. <laughs> I, I wish I had an E-flat in the building. I'll go there. Yeah. Because really, beloved, we're in a time now that this is being challenged. Mm -hmm. And even as believers, every day what we see, our faith has to be strengthened. And the only way that keeps my strength going is my belief and my faith in my Lord and Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And, and so now I, I want to help the believers of Prospect Hill and abroad to further strengthen your faith and belief that, yes, Jesus is real. Yes, we experience some suffering, some trials, some tribulations, and those things, but yes, he experienced those things to us. Experienced those things also, excuse me. He's been tempted, Matthew chapter 4. He, he knows our groans and our moans. That's right. And, and so I, I want to encourage believers abroad to put your trust in him, to know that when you hear various belief systems, you know without a doubt that your Lord and Savior came down, revealed himself, took on Calvary, was victorious on the third day morning, ascended back to the Father, and one day, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's enough. And guess what? It's still some more. It's still some more. It's still some more on that verse 14. That, that bone never runs dry. Absolutely. And I think this inspires others uh, in a different way, just as it does you and I. You know, we, we, we had an opportunity to learn from one another over the years and probably been friends longer, um, better part of 30, 35 years. But we continue to sharpen one another. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. And I think more than anything, this shows that the truth will stand the test of time. No doubt. In a, in a culture of falsehoods, uh, John is, is stating undoubtedly that he is the one you can believe in. And I say that to someone today. He's the one. You know, is he the Christ or should we look for another? Don't look for another. <laughs> He's the one. If there is another, you better run like hell. <laughs> yeah, he already. You better get him out of there. Koresh. <laughs> Jim Jones. Oh, we can go. We can go there. He's like playing pop. He's playing. We go there. Listen, um, were there any questions? Yep. Good. Don't ask no questions because we're tired. <laughs> We're ready to go. But this has been great. If you have been blessed by this, please show show, uh, show, show some sign by sharing this conversation 
And uh, I, um, uh, trust me, Pastor Glassby will be back. Um, I know he's um, um, in a few months. He'll be taking over as pastor, as pastor elect of Northern Baptist. So I got to get him back here before he gets busy. Um, but um, this is good, man. I, I enjoy it. Thank you, man. I appreciate you Absolutely. coming home and sharing with us. Pastor Kid Fanny, you know we love you. And we're definitely supporting and praying as you move forward that God has elevated you and bless you with that of the pastoral ship. Beloved Prosper Kid, love you much. Listen, listen, listen. I need your favor. I need you to do me a favor, Prosper Kid, and that is share, share this, share this, share this. You share everything else. Share this, share this conversation concerning the Gospel of John and that of the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining in. We pray that you were blessed by this as well as helped. And um, Sunday school and our preaching, we'll move to the next verses, uh, which is where I'm at Sunday. Sunday, we will pick up at verse 29. I'm going to have fun with that Sunday. Because when John calls him the Lamb of God, yeah. they, they, they had a familiar, familiarity with lambs. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But John calls the word became flesh, calls him the Lamb of God. The lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Why did God need a lamb? I know that you asked that. No, no, I'm a priest. Don't you, don't you, don't you ask that question? <laughs> no, I'm not going to answer that. But I, why I was just going to say, I just thought about the, the change of uh, the task of the lamb between books mm. and the old book. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's why I say, why did God need a lamb? Yeah. Because yeah. in the old book, mm -hmm. yeah. But that lamb didn't satisfy. No. So God needed another lamb. Mm. And John said he's the lamb of God. And look what he says. Mm. Who takes away. Says now watch this. The relationship between He the had not died yet. That's right. But he says who takes away. Right. He had not seen Calvary yet. Mm. And he won't see Calvary because John's going to die. But he said, My the Lord. Lamb of God, who's going to take away the sin. I won't be here to see it, but that's what he's going to do. That's <laughs> in the time. In, 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 time, in the, the duration time. of time. The time. Yes, yes. This is that season. The, yes, sir. <laughs> Who takes away the sin. What does it mean to take away? Don't you ask me, I got preached this Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to preach over here Sunday. I'm preaching with Big Pool this Sunday. I ain't going to preach over there. No, I'm going to preach over here Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Did okay, beloved. Hurt. We got to go because it's getting good. And, and, and now, we've been known to sit in the restaurant and talk the Bible. We're probably going to do that tonight. To two in the morning. <laughs> but listen, we love you. Thank you so much for joining us. Pastor Glassman, again, thank, thank you, brother. You, love you much. Love you, too. Much obliged. Thank okay, you, you all. You. Uh, we got to go because I'm getting happy. And um, and this is getting good. This is fun. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, I'm sat on my hands fun. two, three times. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's okay. It's just, you can holler in here. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you now for our time together and sharing. Lord, we thank you for this time of conversing your word. Lord, we thank you for that of the listeners. And Lord, we pray that perhaps this will fall into the home of an unbeliever. Yes, Lord. That they come to a, a belief in you. Lord, this is our prayer. Thank God for Pastor Glassy and the Northern Church family. Give him strength. Bless him, his wife, his children. As he goes further in your work. Bless him, Lord, and down what he needs for the journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless each home that is open and listening to the word of God on tonight. Bless the churches across this nation, those who are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless those pastors as, as they labor through these times of uncertainty in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless us all. Lord, you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, we thank you that we, when we were not worthy, you sent your son. Lord, we thank you that the flesh dwelt among us. We thank you 
for letting us receive that grace and that truth. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see your glory. But Lord, we thank you for giving us glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Have a great night being carriage. Love you much, Prospect Hill. Tomorrow, 9 a.m., call and 12 noon Bible study. We'll open up the book of 2 Kings tomorrow in our noon Bible study. God bless you. Good night.